Recently, I've been minimizing my house. There's tons of stuff in life that you don't really need. So I've just been throwing it away, or out the window for my neighbors to deal with. But this does have one problem. I throw out stuff before really thinking about what I need it for. <coughs> and this has led to a couple problems. Most recently, I was looking at my left arm. Now, why do you need two arms when you can have just one? Oh, dang nabbit, I need that to play Zelda. You know what, fine. Let's beat Tears of the Kingdom, the entire game, with only using one hand. And if you're wondering why I'm sometimes a bean, and sometimes a human, well, that would be breaking the fourth wall, so I'm not gonna tell you. Oh, uh, wait, the game's still in Spanish. Is this gonna become a sort of tradition now? <laughs> this happened in my last video too, because I was speedrunning and forgot to change the game back to English. Okay, so here's a slight problem. I did this with Splatoon 3, and that took a long time. And the thing is with Zelda is I'm a lot worse at it. Like, I'm really good at Splatoon, but I'm not good at Zelda. And also, this game's a lot harder. So I don't know how long this is gonna take me. Yeah, so it, it took nearly two months. The game starts off as it always does, on the Great Sky Island. And it took a little while to get used to the one art gameplay. Yay. I killed him. Now, soon I develop two ways of holding the controller. I call them the attacking mode and the anything else mode. The anything else mode is where your hand goes far down and you can reach both analog and dialog sticks, plus the menu buttons, the ABXY buttons, and also the D-pad with a bit of maneuvering. But you can't press ZR or ZL. The attacking mode is where my hand goes a bit higher up and I can reach round to hit both ZR and ZL buttons, while still being able to jump and attack with the joint on my pinky. This position I only used for attacking because it was really uncomfortable and I couldn't move the camera while in it, but it did mean I could do a flurry rush. <laughs> I did a flurry rush. Okay, so it is possible. Oh no, this guy's got a shield. No! Okay, well I entered the Templar time though, so it is saved. Also, something funny I just learned, where I'm from, Raru, which would be pronounced Odu, uh, it means umbilical cord. Boom. <laughs> only problem is with Ultra Hand. When moving stuff around like this, you have to press both the ZR and D-pad buttons when moving. So I soon learned to hate any part of the game that used Ultra Hand. Um, that'll, that'll work. I did it. This jump. See? Perfect. I just need to get the timing right. <laughs> what is Link doing? Yay. Oplo. I'm sure that's completely not how you pronounce it. Okay, made it a few times. Okay, so how will I do this? Fuse it like this. I can take my hands off that by fruit. And then will this just automatically fire? No. Oh, but it's still fused. Oh, not anymore. Great. Let's make a boat. I made a boat. Okay, let's cook some food. I feel like I'm getting better at playing with one hand, just sort of muscle memory on where all the buttons are. <laughs> that actually worked. After getting used to the controls, the rest of the Great Sky Island is mostly just quite slow and takes a bit to work through, but it's still pretty easy. Well, now you're on my seat, get off. I did it. Oh yeah, the game's in English now. After it, I was feeling really confident. The game seems like it was just going to take a while, not necessarily being a super hard challenge. This was not true. It only gets harder from here. Hyrule Kingdom. Ah, oh, this is about flurry rushes. There we go. Yeah, great. Now I've got the paraglider and the Sheikah Towers activated. 
So now that the Great Sky Island is out of the way, the rest of the game becomes what can we do to make the final boss fights easier? Spoilers are up ahead. There are six boss fights before fighting Ganondorf, plus the four waves of the Demon King's army, and you have to defeat all of these in a row without dying once. But, each boss fight can be removed from the final lineup by defeating it in their respective dungeon, with Phantom Ganon needing all five dungeons being completed. And doing a dungeon sounds like a great idea. We get one heart container, one less boss fight during the final boss rush, and a champion friend with a special ability that can help fight during battles. Now the question is, what dungeons? I don't really want to do more than one, and the only two boss fights that would actually be a challenge during the boss rush would be the Marbled Goma or the Queen Gibdo, as the Muck Rock doesn't attack well, the Seized Construct can just be pushed into a wall, and Kolgara is, well, Kolgara. So I decided to head towards Death Mountain and fight the Marbled Goma, as the Desert Quest would just take a long time. And it wasn't planned, but Yonobo would turn out to be a very helpful asset during some of the boss fights. Got a horse, and it's got three spurs. Hmm. Didn't even need to soothe it. Okay, let's take it to a stable. Keep pressing X instead of A. <laughs> it's gonna make a horse riding hard. What's my horse name? A General Trot. That's your name. Is that a... Is that a panic blood moon? Why'd that happen? Okay, here we are in Goron City. I started the quest, and it has two very easy boss fights before the dungeon. You beat up Yonobo and break his mind-controlling hat, then climb up the volcano to fight Morgarias. To fight... Morgar... Mor Mor Morgia... Morgia... Wait... Why isn't the cutscene starting? I don't know if I've ever been up here while the surface is still on. I must have walked past the cutscene trigger. There's... Just a giant big bit of malice here, or gloom. Do I have to talk to you? Oh, right, okay, that's it. Wow, a conveniently placed giant airplane. What am I looking at here? Oh, there it is. Dead. Does he not take full damage or something? Ah, oh, I need flame resistant stuff. I don't know if I have enough flame guard. 14 minutes and 20 seconds, or else I run out of flame guard. Let's go fast. Fire temple. I very quickly ran out of fireproof elixir, so I went up to the surface to quickly grab some more. Now I wouldn't describe the fire temple as a hard dungeon, but just really annoying. No! <laughs> I had to grab more fireproof elixir, twice because of how long it took. I even end up having to farm gems just so that I could buy the flame breaker armor. I don't know what was so difficult about the dungeon, but probably the combination of ultra hand controls and not actually understanding how you were meant to do the puzzles. But then comes the boss. Okay, ascend. Right, let's equip good weapon. I'm gonna go with my 17. Kill him. I'm barely even using you, Nobo. Hey, I just realized, if you look up onto the ceiling... Huh, you can see the secret stone before it falls. Phase 2. Okay. Uh, spike down boil. Hammer. Come on. Yes! Dead Gahoma. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Next is just a lot of preparing for the final boss rush. I need weapons, plus monster horns, food, fairies, and some other things to help during the fights. The first thing I did was glide to some sky islands to pick up some fairies. Deploy that. Oh. Why? Then deploy it, then emit it. Oh. Okay, well that didn't work either. Great. And yeah, there are fairies here. Great. And Sunday lions, which is the other thing I need. And I could also go into Farin to get some mighty food. Okay, this looks good. Oh yeah, look at all these. Mighty bananas. There we go, got a flea rush, and... Okay, great. I cooked up all the food I had and turned it into a bunch of sunny food, which I would use for regenerating gloom hearts, 
and some Mighty Food. Mighty Food would give my weapons a 1.5 times attack bonus, substantially reducing how many times I needed to attack, therefore saving weapon durability. And I was pretty happy with my weapons, so I headed down the tunnels underneath Hyrule Castle and began the final boss fights. There we go. Why, 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 why? Okay, that does so little damage. Nope. Okay, this should kill him. No, it didn't. Didn't even kill him. Well. Yeah, it was obvious that I hadn't prepared enough. My weapons weren't doing enough damage, I was outnumbered and just kept taking damage. But, I had found out a strategy for getting rid of the Demon King's army in my last Zelda video. Puff shrooms and cool rocks. I went into the depths to grab some puff shrooms and metal buds. These are heavily underused items, a puff shroom can make all monsters just stop moving and not notice you, meaning an easy sneak strike, and muddle buds just make them attack each other. Next on the agenda was some better weapons. I upgraded my inventory so that I could carry more. Boom! So I tried looking for some good weapons around Hyrule Castle. Oh! <gasps> Royal Guard Sword and Royal Guard Shield. I had a Royal Guard Spear. Royal Broadsword? What is Link doing? This this was a good idea. Come in here. Oh, that's good. Fifty. What? A bow that has been in the royal family for ages. It has been used by princes who fought beasts of twilight. Is this a reference to Twilight Princess? I did not know this existed. Oh, just oh, they've got a different sort of arrow trajectory. Okay, so, so it's just a powerful bow, okay. Now those moblins have some good horns. Oh wait, I just realized they're right next to water. If we could try and push them into the water, then we could just kill them super easily. All that, that also works. 24, yeah, that's a good horn. After grabbing amazing weapons, I went up Death Mountain again to grab some rare rocks. Not to sell, but to throw. I took a leaf out of the speedrunner's book and used the incredibly explosive power of rupees, topazes, and sapphires to completely destroy large groups of enemies. But I still wanted some more monster horns, and I had an eye on Ferocious Spike. It did plenty of damage, plus an electrical bonus, zip zap, which could be used to knock weapons out of enemies' hands. But I couldn't find Ferocious. He was nowhere to be seen. I tried up looking up locations where he went at what time, went to those locations at those times, but there was nothing. Okay, so Farish should have just went down into the chasm. I can't see him. In the end, I decided to head into Farron again. There were quite a few monsters that could give me good horns, and that was all I needed. After a few more fairies and a heart container, I was ready. I went back to the Demon King's army, ready for a rematch. And the plan worked perfectly. With just one rupee, I could do a massive amount of damage. Even being able to kill all the Gibdos with just one topaz. The Lozyphos' annoying movement can be cancelled with a puff shroom, and the Moblins are the same. These would also drop more weapons and good monster horns, being able to make even more good weapons. But after the Demon King's army comes the boss fights. Kolgar is easy enough, as you don't even need to use weapons to fight it, and the Muktarok is really easy if you just sacrifice one of your weapons to become an opal sword, which can shoot infinite water. Just remember that you are always on full health. See, there's a little helpful quirk in the game that's meant to stop monsters from one-shotting you. So if you have full health and take damage, it is impossible to die, only get down to a quarter of a heart. So that's why I brought about 20 packed lunches, so I could constantly regenerate and basically never die. Then there's the Queen Gibdo. This is by far the hardest, but I soon found out an easy strategy by just staying back and very slowly doing damage with Yunobo from afar. Then there's phase two, which I don't have a plan for, and just run around in the chaos of explosions and Gibdos. The Ceased Construct is actually not at all too difficult once you know the secret technique. 
you need to do a lot of knockback to it and knock it into the electric fence to do damage. And if you have a soldier's weapon, you can do spin attacks really fast. Spin attacks do tons of knockback and you can beat it. When it flies, just shoot it with a Zonai device. Last is Phantom Ganon. The only plan I have for this is just to equip a good weapon and try your very hardest to do a flurry rush. I've been practicing across the whole game doing flurry rushes and I was confident enough to do them consistently. Just keep your shield up whenever possible to minimize the damage. Even with all the tricks I just told you, this still wasn't easy, and I wanted to save most of my fairies for Ganon himself. But then on attempt number seven. Yes, 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 okay. Whew. Only one more. Right, phase one. Okay, but I'm sure that Phase 2 is going to be substantially more difficult. Okay, I like his spear attack, that's really easy to flow and rush. And dude, attack up damage with a good weapon. That's doing so much damage. We should switch to be using this one, which does even more. Okay, he's, he's, he's damaging my shield a bit though. Oh, I didn't even mean to do that. That was just an accidental parry. That was actually really cool. It was the wrong button again. Oh, I'm hitting the wrong guy. Okay, this should go into phase two. Great. Oh, okay. Oh, he's flourishing these again. Oh, I got it! Okay, that immediately broke there. Okay. okay. Yes, okay. Um, I'm running low on weapons though. Uh. Okay, flurry rush. Okay, I can't get hit here. Uh. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of damage. That's really good. Okay. Right, one more flurry rush, and I think that should be it. Oh, but I didn't jump in time. Okay, right. No, that was the wrong way. Okay, one shield left. Shields, and I've only got five hearts. 
That's a, a fairy. So, oh, I still have another fairy? I didn't even realize that. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> first try. That is actually first try Ganondorf. And just for context, I'm not in. I'm not just insanely good at Zelda, but this challenge is a lot easier than it looks and sounds. I'd totally recommend it for anyone wanting to find challenge. So, that's the end. Demon Dragon is just a Dark Beast Ganon version 2, and it looks like I won't need a new arm replacement. Woohoo! While making this video, I heard about a charity called the Able Gamers Charity. Just to be clear, this video isn't sponsored or anything, but I just thought it was really relevant to this video in particular. The Able Gamers try to give options to disabled kids or adults to have ways to play video games, even without a usual number of body parts. Helping people connect online where they otherwise couldn't. And they've even created specialized controllers for different disabilities in basically this exact scenario. The link to their website is in the description, and right here if you want to check it out. Bye!